Hello folks, iPhones have many advantages, but some people consider these smartphones to be kind of standard or even perfection. But this is far from true. In this video, we'll see the disadvantages of iPhones and iOS in particular. So you know what to do, send this video to those who own iPhones or thinking about iPhones. But keep in mind that maybe some of the features are already added to the moment you watch this video. But to be honest, I doubt it. One more thing before we start, I recommend you subscribe to our Telegram channel Iggy Tech using the link in the description. I will post the additional disadvantages of iPhones that are not included in this video. Well, now let's begin. iPhone navigation is a pain. Swipe back doesn't work everywhere and only from the left edge of the screen. Most of the time you need to tap the back button in the top left corner of the screen. Super inconvenient. You cannot move app icons anywhere you want, even after 16 years, no matter if you can't reach them at the top of the home screen. All iPhone home screens are the same, even comparing to previous iOS versions. Home screen looks always the same. You cannot separately adjust the volume of the alarm, notifications and ringer. iPhone has only two distinct volumes, ringers and alerts, ringtone, alarm, notification sounds and media, music, games, in-app sound. They are not separated. So, for example, you can miss important calls notifications because the alarm volume was set to quiet or vice versa, to wake up to a blaring loud alarm noise in the morning because the volume was set to loud. When dialing a number in the keypad, your contacts wouldn't show up. You cannot see the call history for one specific person or number on an iPhone. It keeps a call history in recent of all the calls you have made to all numbers. However, Apple hasn't provided the ability to go into an individual contact and view the call history for just that contact. It's just not linked and sorted via the iPhone contacts list. Lightning works at 8 year old speed. Fortunately, that's changing with iPhone 15 as Lightning is replaced by USB-C, but Apple wouldn't be Apple if it didn't limit port speeds to the 20-year-old USB 2.0 standards on base versions. The Pro versions still have 3.0, which is a little better. App notifications don't automatically go away on the iPhone if read on another Apple device. What kind of ecosystem is this that cannot do such a basic thing? If I read the notification on the iPod, then remove it from the iPhone. Why do I need to see it again, Apple? For Look, here are two notifications on the Galaxy Tab and Galaxy S23 Ultra. I open the notification on the phone, it is removed from the tablet. On the iPhone, you can't customize app notification behavior to show only alerts for different categories. You can configure how to receive notifications, but not what to receive. You can't, like on Samsung, for example, select the categories of notifications that you want to receive or not to receive. You cannot set a specific notification sound for a specific app, only one sound for all applications at once. Once. You cannot postpone the notification for an hour and then receive it again. Maybe you are busy right now and don't want to miss important information later. On Android you can postpone it, so it will come again in a given time. On the iPhone you can either read it or swipe it off the screen. If you have a poor Wi-Fi signal, your iPhone will disconnect from it without warning. When the screen is locked, your iPhone will pause background downloads. This saves battery but limits your actions. What about privacy? Well, you can turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on a locked iPhone, and basically you can do whatever you want here. This is just nonsense. For example, on Samsung, authentication is required for all these actions. And yeah, I know that you can remove a taskbar in the lock screen, but it's not by default. How many people know about that? And no matter what your settings, anyone can turn off a locked iPhone. Hard to believe, but there is no need to prove your identity to turn off an iPhone. You cannot clear the application cache, which is why the memory feels other. You can't close all the open apps on your iPhone at once. There is no such a button. You can't change your default navigation in Siri, it's only Apple Maps. You cannot install a third-party payment system. You cannot delete several contacts at once, only through the website. There is no button to reboot the iPhone, only turn it off. There is no status bar with app notifications because this notch is huge, and on versions with Dynamic Island it's the same, it's as huge as this notch. You cannot fully unlock your iPhone until you swipe from bottom to top. I know you get used to it, but still it's inconvenient. You cannot run two of the same app on an iPhone which will use different data or different accounts. Also, it's called cloning apps. You can't split your iPhone screen to use multiple apps at once. Yes, you can do multiple things at once by switching apps back and forth, but that doesn't even come close to the level of multitasking some devices offer. Picture-in-picture -picture mode doesn't work with applications, it supports videos only. You can't swipe the notification or navigation panel from the bottom of the screen. You 
always have to reach all the way to the top, which makes it difficult to operate the smartphone with one hand. While iPhones are great filmmaking tools, one major downside is that you can't pause and resume video recording as well. You can just stop recording entirely and start a new video. There is no indication that the silent mode is on, so you can miss important calls and texts because you forget to switch the silent mode off. There is no an on-screen indicator. In silent mode, there will be no sound in all applications. There is no way to set exceptions when you want to see urgent alerts from a few critical apps. You cannot manually install applications without App Store. It's possible, but this is not an easy task. The iPhone calculator doesn't keep history. If you do a lot of calculations and somewhere you make a mistake, then you need to start over. No clear way to backspace your inputs and previous calculations. You cannot set a ringtone in one click. There are many steps using the third-party GarageBand application which you need to install. You cannot change the wallpaper in one tab. You have to go to the settings and make some steps. There is no way to set a crescendo feature for an alarm so that it's more gentle and not as destructive. iOS default alarm app doesn't tell you how far away the alarm is set for. You can miss meetings because of this. For example, when you set an alarm by mistake and don't see how long before the alarm goes off. You cannot share files via Bluetooth with non-Apple devices pretty selfish. You can't just connect an iPhone to a PC without Apple's proprietary software. It makes no sense. Apple slows down all the devices, but to be honest, I don't really think that they do it to increase sales. It's kind of a necessity because the battery degrades a lot and it just can't run the device properly, so no miracle here. If you have more than one Bluetooth audio device connected, you cannot play different media on multiple devices simultaneously. I mean, for example, on Samsung phones, you can specify playing music from streaming app on your Bluetooth speaker, but YouTube on your phone. You can easily change the audio output by tapping your desired device. iPhones don't have this feature yet. You can't customize the iPhone's quick panel. For example, you need to move your thumb very far to reach the hotspot button. Lack of consistency. For example, the newest content in the album is at the bottom, but when you send a photo in the messenger, the latest photos are at the top. Every time you freeze for a second trying to figure out where is the end of the list and where is its beginning. You cannot use an iPhone as a flash drive. Slow charging. About two hours for a full charge is nonsense. It doesn't show the charging time, so you never know how long it takes for your iPhone to charge completely. No reverse wireless charging feature that would allow the iPhone to charge other devices like the AirPod. You cannot configure Purup VPN connection. VPN is either enabled or disabled for all apps. Many branded services do not work outside the US, although they are included in the price. Apple does not produce two SIM smartphones for Europe and the USA. Apple's oleophobic code isn't really good. Any device I've ever used without a screen protector is absolutely covered in fingerprints in seconds. Hot and slow under loads. iPhones get quite hot because they don't care about the heat dissipation system, so these smartphones become slow under load. And finally, a lot of bugs when a new version of the operating system is released. Don't get me wrong, other OS also have their own bugs. I'm just saying that iPhone are not flawless in this regard as well. Alright guys, these were 50 disadvantages advantages of iPhone and iOS. There are others. I will publish them on our Telegram channel as I said at the beginning of this video. The link to it is in the description. Again, share this video wherever possible. Spread the truth. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on the disadvantages of iPhones. Maybe we will make a second part of this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Good luck to everyone.